and welcome to Uncut, live from our studio in Dubai. The audio and visual podcast show that gives you exclusive scoop on our guests and hot topics including some of your favorite celebrities. And now, let the fun begin. Here's your host, S1. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is for you. We are back. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of Uncut with S1. Tonight, we're doing this a bit different. As you can see, our guest is actually in Texas and will be joining us on a Zoom call. Um, This guest is a really special one. His enthusiasm and raw quality with uh, this talent, you know, just pure talent right here. Um, Landed him amazing roles on television, including Hannah Montana, Weeds, Everyone Hates Chris, and Seventh Heaven. And of course, he is someone who can't take the word, I can't, serious, because he has made everything um, really possible for himself. And uh, with uh, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce him. He is an inspirational person, and I'm super excited to have him on the show. In 2008, he landed his biggest role as Walter White's son on Breaking Bad. Please welcome RJ Mitty. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks How for having you, me. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm s- it's such a pleasure to have you. Um, honestly, you know, it's how has life been? Corona has taken the world by storm and <laughs> <laughs> it's wild, man. It's a wild, it's a wild time in, in our, in our civilizations and in kind of the world right now, of what we, of what we're trying to do and, and what we kind of physically can't do now to what we can do. And, you know, I, I think we're in a great position of growth. You know, I think a lot of things is bringing awareness to a lot of issues that have already been issues and have been issues and continue to be an issue. Right. But uh, I believe we're, we're facing them and we're facing them admirably and having the impact that we need. And, you know, you you seeing a lot of things change, both right. positive and negative change. But I for me, I, I see it both as a positive um, and, and we're moving forward, you know. I, uh, I'm actually in a situation. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, and that's the person I was just going to say. That's the person you are. I, th- I think you're such a positive person in general. Um, but tell me a little bit about your situation right now. Because um, I know you had you were actually supposed to be somewhere else right now, but you had to take an emergency flight and still made it to this interview, which I'm really grateful yeah. for. Thank you so much. <laughs> Well, lo- luckily I skipped the planes, but uh, I-, I drove my, um, I'm dealing with, um, actually a COVID situation. My father, um, has COVID at the moment oh and my is God. Um, dealing with transporting from one hospital to a COVID facility, um, to being even released with COVID, um, and, okay. and trying to figure out how to self quarantine. And he's, he, um, has other medical issues um that are making co are making covid making them more challenging yeah. and uh and so i drove in today uh like six hour drive and uh handling some business with that and and just kind of dealing with it you know it, it's interesting seeing covid because you see it and you hear about it and you get it but when you're actually dealing with it firsthand and you see the lack of policy and the lack oh. of procedures and, and just kind of hoping and praying that, oh, this is how we treat it. Um, it it's, it's interesting. Um, but at the same time, if my father can survive it, anyone can survive it. Yeah, and <laughs> our prayers are with you and your family. And we hope that um, he will, you know, be cured from it at ASAP. Um, it is a horrible thing to be going through right now. And the stories we hear worldwide right now, it's so unfortunate with what's going on. Um, but you know what? Like you said, our prayers are with you. And hopefully he will be an example um, that, you know, a lot of people Positive. that are strong uh, yeah. can go through this. I, I believe there's a, you know, as as human beings is what we are. We survive. We adapt. We grow. And, and as, as we do, so do viruses and bacteria do as well. 
and right. it's time that we just raise we raise that bar of knowledge and medical equipment and facilities and understanding to to meet this level and i think we're going through that right now and you know all we can do is positivity and and hope and pray for a better tomorrow i agree i agree rj have you been to dubai have you ever been to dubai I have not. I, I have a lot of friends um, that lived in Dubai and from Saudi and, and I just never really had the chance to get over there. And I've been wanting to for a very long time, but uh, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for the right opportunity to, to go. Well, hopefully we'll make something happen because we definitely want to see you when things settle down. Obviously, want to see you come to Dubai and experience Dubai because, you know, it's such a beautiful place. I think you would love it. I, that's what I hear. I hear it, it's amazing and, and everything I've seen and my friends that live in Dubai and, and live in the, um, the, AU or the EU and it's one of those things that really um, have always intrigued me and right. I hear the beauty, I hear the, the engineering and ingenuity and um, I think it's an amazing place. Um, where you're at right now, you're in Texas, how are your... Um, uh, situations there. Do you have any lockdowns, curfews? Are you able we, to move around? We do. You know, right right now, um, being based in Texas, you know, there are curfews, there are lockdowns. Um, I think primarily it, it's really continuing the, se- the self-quarantine, um, wearing a mask. You know, this right. is the thing with masks is they don't always protect you, but if you do have a sickness or a virus or whatever it is, it protects you from getting others sick. The responsibility of you infecting others is is right. higher than getting infected. Because yes. um, anyone can get treated once they're infected, but if you're not, or if you already have it, the liability of you infecting others is, is really, is really higher. Um, yeah. So we, we have mandatory mask. Uh, our curfew just lifted uh, last night, actually. We had okay. a, a, a 10 o'clock curfew and then a, we had like a 9 or 8 o'clock curfew for kids okay. um, or young adults driving. And uh, they just lifted it. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to keep people employed. They're trying to, to get people to feel comfortable back in their environment, to, to not have these restrictions of government and, and sure. these, these, you know, there's so many, there's so many movements happening right now. It, it's like, is this real or is this a farce? Is this is this something that we we don't we it's just made up or how do we handle movements? How do we still show support yet at the same time be safe showing support? And I right. think people don't know. People don't know what to do, but they feel it in their heart. And right. they feel the need to do something. But I, I find we can do it here, like we're doing now. We have right. this ability. Yes, and I agree, and I think this is something that, um, when when speaking of positive things, this is such a positive thing that we are now doing things that we weren't doing before. You know, like honestly, um, how we're doing this right now, we weren't that much into this. Like we only had guests come into the studio, you know, and when you're here, and then yeah. that was like kind of our policy. And now we opened up, and we want to speak to you know um, a broader. Uh, range of people from all over the world, which I love. Um, well, this and creates, I think it creates access. Sorry, it, exactly. it's one of the things people people have always looked at this as kind of a side note of of oh no 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 we want we want high high production in studio ma- mandatory mandates of this is how we do it and this is how it's going to be. But but now we're in a place where we can be fluid and we can fit to the molds and we can still get our messages out there and, and make the, and meet those audiences, but from the safety of your studio and from the safety right. of my hotel room. Oh, yeah, I agree. Has your work been affected in any way? Have you been able to, you know, still do movies or shows? How's it going with that? Um, I think... There are some productions that are still working. Um, as a as a producer, as someone that, that works on more on the production side as well, we're very busy because um, okay. it, it's a lot of proofing, it's a lot of emails, it's a lot of a lot of like showing docs and fundraising and stuff like that. So on that end, it's super busy. 
But okay. as an actor, uh, as an artist, when it comes to to the actual theatricals of it, uh, right. dead, dead, right. dead, dead. And uh, <laughs> sa- sadly, right. you, we have to come up with our own with our own form of output, you know. And I think right. there's a lot of social media and influencers are great. Um, this is the time to be an influencer. This is the time to be right. that, that Instagram, that Twitter, that that uh, uh, TikTok, or whatever it be, famous to yeah. cultivate that type of media. But luckily um, for me, I, I do a lot of other positions. I do a lot of other work, um, cool. which involves a lot of paperwork and numbers. Oh, right. um, <laughs> nice. So, so like an account, yeah. accounting or... What kind of? Um... Uh, I, I run a foundation based out of Austin, so and okay. we're still up and run, we're still operational because most of our stuff is granting and in, in, in that regard. So we're all on the web. Um, oh, that's amazing. We have amazing. very minimal contact. I sent all the. We have a couple of employees. I sent them home. They've been working okay. for home for almost six months now. Um, I've been quarantined since the beginning because technically I'm high risk. Um, right. but, but when it comes to industry, luckily I had other movies that are coming out now. So okay. that you, so that when, you filmed before, right? Yeah. I filmed that's last amazing. year and the year before last. <laughs> so that's good. That's really good. Um, you, you were a judge for, uh, Easter Seals disability film, um, challenge, I am, yes. which was the home edition. Uh, uh, I wanted to tell us a little bit more about this project. And yeah, so, with it. so I, I am a judge for the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. So um, for people that don't know, Easter Seals is a uh, organization that provides tools and um, lessons for individuals with disabilities. Um, they're all over the world. Um, they're based, they're based um, all over the U.S. And, uh, and my good friend Nick Novicki um, works with them very well and he created a um, disability film challenge focusing on creating and showing individuals in front and behind the camera with disabilities and uh, okay. we just re- we just um, closed our registration actually recently for another at home disability film challenge on documentary style um, oh, nice like the, the overall goal is let's let's get people to to show themselves to create art and and continue their imaginations and and so with this film challenge it's it's all at home it's very basic it's an, an iPhone and a and a and a story that's in your head right. and uh, and and hopefully we can get those people out of their minds and onto the screen. Yeah, and and that's such a great platform. Like, cause you guys, obviously, you being a, a you know kind of like an icon in this industry and in your field particularly, you've you've helped so many people. And now your platform again, um, along with the team, you know, giving people with disabilities um, a platform to show off, uh, yeah. sh- showcase their work. You know, well, it, it's one of those things where it's it's. If you have a disability, you have insight to a whole new world, to a whole new understanding of, of what the human condition really is. Right. And so many people forget that it's, oh, this is the way I live. So this is the way that everyone lives. And, mm-hmm. and that's not accurate. That, but, right. but we have that perception and there's nothing wrong with that. But the case is very apparent that, that we, we all don't live the same. We don't think the same. We don't behave the same. So let's show and highlight how people get around this world and make their impacts. And uh, having a disability only enhances that. I agree. Um, you're you're such an inspiration to everyone, honestly. Like Screen Actors Guild named you as the spokesperson um, uh, for disabilities, uh, for people with disabilities, which is amazing. Uh, how did that feel? I mean, you also won awards from them. How did it feel like being, representing, you know, people in that way? Um, complicated. <laughs> it's, a compli- it's a complicated emotion, man. You know, there, there's a lot of perception of yourself with expectations 
not so much always real expectations, but these expectations that are in uh, your head. Right. And I, I think for me, I'm very lucky that I have a good team and good friends um, from working in this industry that, that we, we complement each other. We raise the bar for each other. So being a spokesperson um, for disabled actors for me is an honor at the same time, a duty to make sure that I, I promote it positively and highlight individuals that need those things to be that guy that doesn't just always walk through the door, but holds the door open for others. And, and for me, it's key. That's a big thing you just said there, you know, um, because walking through that door is probably a hundred times easier, right? Than just uh, than holding it open and giving way for yeah. others to walk with you. Um, that's an amazing message. I mean, that's a challenge I think um, a lot of industries face, you know, and a lot of people have. Again, we are humans. A lot of times we yeah. are selfish to, you know, automatically think of ourselves, put ourselves well, first. We have fear. We we yeah. have this this fear. If if I if I do this, I'm going to lose this. Or if I don't if I don't get through this door and close it behind me, everyone else is just going to take my spot. And that's not always the case. Yeah. <laughs> like, not always. <laughs> some, not always. And and for me, I believe that that you can be that helping hand, that person that needs that 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 step forward, because we always. At some point in our life, we need that person to be like, hey, this, that is not the door you want to open. Trust me. You know what yeah. I mean? This is the door. This door is open for you. Right. Walk through it with me and, and let's, let's grow together. And then let's, let's grow apart and grow tall. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the biggest thing is people always forget that it takes one person to change the world. It takes, yeah. it takes many to make it work but really it only takes one and that that one person continues to affect more and more and more and each of those individuals are that one person right and um, you can make that well very well said um you have a disability that is uh called uh, i'm hope i'm gonna pronounce this right cerebro palsy um, Correct. So, Correct. Or, or or CP, um, and you've you've worked hard to overcome every obstacle, um, like playing sports, uh, landing major acting roles. Um, how did you overcome these obstacles? You know, what was uh, that step that made you overcome those? And how did you not say, you know what, I'm never gonna be that person, or I can't be that person, because of my disabilities you know like a lot of times yeah. myself i'm speaking about myself right now if if i would injure my leg you know i would automatically say oh i'm i can't do this right because you automatically like it's it's an automatic function yeah, for me you use it as an excuse yeah. right um well, it's because you never lived with it you you right. never you've never experienced that that like oh i i've hurt my leg i i'm in this chair i'm using these crutches it's like oh well now i just i can't walk anymore right like, no you you can still walk it's just not the same way same way exactly and for me i grew up um with a belief that can't is a decision when you when you when you say I can't do this or I can't do that, you're choosing not to. Now it may not be the same way that that person is doing it, but you can do it if you want to. And I I I was very lucky to grow up with that belief. So when it was came to my disability, and it came to physical therapy and occupational therapy. And, and all the other things that come with that, that training, that body and mind to work together. For me, it wasn't looking f- to the future of I will never be that. It's who am I now and what do I want now? Right. And, and that's the thing. It's like if you hurt your leg, you want to heal, right? Yes. You'd be like, I don't, I don't want to walk with a limp. I don't want to do all these things. So you're going to learn how to how to work around that and to help it heal and for me that's what i focus with my disability is how can i 
how can I make it work with me and not against me? Right. Um, for people that don't know what cerebral palsy is, um, it's what's commonly caused at childbirth. It's from lack of oxygen to the brain, which affects the fine gross motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and um, elastic- elasticity in the muscles. Um, okay. This is from... This isn't a genetic thing. This isn't like something that you're that like it's like one in a million are born with. This has to do with doctors and prenatal care. Um, oh. So it's actually something that is is fairly treatable um, it, prior to being born. Okay. Um, so it's something. So, was this something that was not seen, or what? Did they not? Um. So I'm adopted. Right. Um, and my birth mother was fairly young with no insurance. Um, okay. so, uh, in the U S we don't have the best track record yeah. for, uh, medical care without insurance. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I nice. was kind of seen, uh, I was, I wasn't seen as a priority. I was seen as a, is, is initially like a tumor. It's like, it's oh. like, Oh, it's there, but you don't have to remove it yet. Um, oh. until the insurance kicks in. Um, so, um, that was kind of my situation with that. So it just, my mother was left in labor for too long. And, um, and I have very limited re- um, knowledge on my birth parents right. being adopted and a closed adoption. So when it came to my medical treatment, they could not, they didn't know what happened until I was three and I was a sealed document as well. So we, I don't have any records of, of what happened, who and what and when. Um, so when it comes to that, it's, it's very, um, it's very sketchy. Yeah, <laughs> Cause you don't, yeah, you don't really know. So, but I mean, no. look, I think everything in this world happens for a reason. And I, I do, I agree. I, I'm a believer that, you know, you're such an, inspiration today and god knows uh if if, if this disability wasn't there maybe you wouldn't have been you know I, only god I wouldn't have been i can i can tell i could tell you if i didn't have cerebral palsy we wouldn't be talking today i wouldn't have gotten breaking bad i wouldn't be able to do the advocacy work that i do i wouldn't have the knowledge that i have wow. you know i look at it as a positive you know people people look at disability as a negative you know, you right. see someone that's disabled and you're yeah. like, oh, that dude can't do anything. To me, a disability is power because knowledge is power. And the 100%. more knowledge you have of who you are and what you stand for and what you believe, the stronger you are as an individual. I agree. And you're a perfect example for that. Um, bullying is such a huge issue in this world, right? Um, I yeah. think I think uh, a lot of people don't understand the seriousness of of bullying, you know, and how often people get affected by it on on a daily basis. Uh, I know you had your own campaigns, and I know you've you've talked about this before. But tell me, how did you have issues with bullying when you were a kid, and if you did, or now, how yeah. did you, you know, how did you overcome that? You know, I, I think we all face bullies. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think any anyone in this world at one person or, or one place or another has not faced a bully. Oh yeah. That could be a that could be a boss, that could be a coworker, that could be a friend, that could be a schoolmate. There, there's so many forms of this and and it's all about intimidation. Right. At the end of the day, bullying is nothing more than an intimidation tactic. And for me, I, I did deal with bullies. I, I dealt with, um, with, with quite a few just because I wore braces and I, I talked a little different and, right. and I just, and, and I thought a little different and, um, I, I wouldn't, I had verbal and physical. And this is the thing is for me, I always fall back. I didn't, I, I don't, I don't just, I'll get pushed, push me once. Cool. Right. Push me twice. Cool. Push me again, I'm pushing you back. Right. Um, yeah, and that's that's and, um, <laughs> that's a good strategy, bro. <laughs> I would do the same. <laughs> you know. Um, well, you can't you can't always take it. You know, people yeah. people take it and take it and take it, and then they end up taking their own life. 
Right. And that's and that's something that we we need to stop this is this we hide our hurt. We we bury it and then 15 years or 20 years later here it comes. And it's like I never dealt with that. I never I never had my moment or my shot to stand up for what I believed in. And when it comes to bullies and and I believe you know, we, we can't end bullying. And it bothers me when I hear organizations or, or campaigns saying, stop bullying, end it now forever. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. That's impossible. That that's part of our nature is is not not to not to just bully, but to to, to have this authoritative action of of um, of a hierarchy. Right. It's it's instilled, it's it's been instilled in our upbringing for so long. That that it's just an innate trait to to want to have this this when they when someone sees something that they don't understand to attack it, and I find it's okay to be who you are. It's okay, and it's okay to be attacked, but right. you have to learn how to handle the attack, how to handle that aggressor, because they're probably being bullied as well. They're probably in a position of suffering. They're probably in a position of depression. And that is the only way for someone to, to express themselves. And that's what they've learned is, oh, I express myself by, by pushing or, or name calling or do this. But really, I, I just don't understand. Right. And I think that's, that's and, part of the bully or bullier. Yeah. yeah. And I think Sorry. that's the, the defense, um, the defense system that you want to use on how to defend yourself is so important because no war has ever been won without defending yourself right so um i think defense is so important and just to have a strategy with that and you know to all the kids watching um make sure you know you don't take it in if you have an issue speak to someone about it and you know definitely speak up about it you know Sorry. yeah yeah great. it's just a message <laughs> <laughs> all right let's go let's go on to the next question let's go. Next, um, next one man <laughs> let me tell you i heard i heard okay that you were a really really good football player and i i was a decent i was decent well i heard the story of that you had an issue with someone because they were Actually, they came and broke your arm on purpose because... Yeah. Well, I, I was actually playing uh, basketball. I was, I, was playing, um, I was playing basketball with, with these guys at school. And okay. we, we, we were winning, I guess. I wasn't really paying attention, but apparently the, the kid that we were playing with wasn't happy. Oh um, and he... He kicked me in the hand and he broke he broke my hand across um my knuckles. And uh and it was just like just like <laughs> what it why? Why and, and I went to go because I was sweeping the the ball out from under him and he just kicked kicked it. And like you don't do that in basketball. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I'm sure was uh pure jealousy, you know. You can tell like He probably thought yeah. to himself, like, you know, I'm getting my butt kicked by someone in his like head. this crippled kid. I'm had... getting my butt kicked by a crippled kid. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't handle it. He couldn't handle it. And that goes to show you, like, don't judge people. Don't judge a book yeah. by its cover. Because you never know, you know, what's inside well, that book. I have a funny story about that, actually, though. So when I... um. When I broke my hand, I, I went through the whole day with, with at school with a broken hand. My grandfather picked me up. Right. Um, and he was like, your hand's not broken. Your hand's not broken. My hand swelled up really big. And I'm like, oh, we need to go to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, my mother was in the, um, the OR with my little sister. And okay. I was in the ER with my broken hand. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, so right, right when they wrapped my hand, they put me in a cast um, a, a minutes before my sister was born, and oh. and I'm and I'm holding her, and I got this cast on my oh, hand, and I, uh, this freshly wrapped <laughs> wrapped cast. It's funny. Oh my god! That's that's actually what a coincidence. The timing was perfect. <laughs> Wild. Well, um, going back to 
um, you landing one of your biggest roles, uh, which was in Breaking Bad, only six months into your acting career, right? Um, did you ever think that was going to happen? No. No, no, no. How? How could you? How could you ever realize this? And it was funny. Is my very first audition I ever went on was for an anti meth commercial. Oh, it was an okay. anti. It was a PSA <laughs> um, about methamphetamine and how disruptive it is to the family. And then you ended up <laughs> on a show all about. That. Six months later, I started auditioning <laughs> for it, and in a year, we shot the pilot. And here we are, it's crazy. almost 15 years later. That's it's a crazy. wild time. Um, do you still go back and watch uh, the show, or are you like the type you know, who done and been there? <laughs> yeah. No, I um I don't watch any of my work. Uh, I'm not really a fan of of myself. Why? Why? Oh, I hate myself. The like world it. loves just, you. The world uh, loves you for who the, you are. And well, come on, this is it just the world. The world can love me. I don't <laughs> have to. Um, no, it's just hard for me to watch my own work. Um, yeah. I've seen the first episode of every season. I've seen the last episode of the last season, and I watch Better Call Saul. I saw El Camino. Um, I, I okay. still keep in touch with everyone, but when it comes to like my my content and my. I, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> so let's just say you're your own biggest critic, right? Oh, or I'm the, I'm my worst critic. <laughs> but I have to say, you did an amazing job. Obviously, on Breaking Bad, um, that show went crazy worldwide. How was it? Um, because obviously before that, I don't think you had anything that major. Was was Nothing. the fame? Did did that change anything in your life? Um, you know. It's interesting to lose anonymity. Um, mm. You know, it, it's kind of this weird thing of of you're able to go anywhere in the world and you don't really have consequences. You know, right. there's like you can you can go to a new town and reinvent yourself. And and really, for me, I go to this. I go to a new town and I'm still the same person, and I still have the the same um, same story behind me that I can't shake. Because right. it, it is my face. Yeah. Um, I, I think people don't realize what fame is. And and people now try so hard with, with influencers and, and media. Um, but people don't really understand what they give up to what they gain. And for me, um, what, I, what I gave up and, and what I gained for what I gained was the ability to affect change. The ability right. to make an impact in people's lives and and to affect everyone around me and and for me I guess that price is worth paying, mm -hmm. um, but um but it, it's a hard it's hard to to look back and go it's like oh yeah I knew this was gonna be the the route or this right. is where it was gonna take me I you you can't but Breaking Bad was a great catalyst for my life. In the series, you ha your character has CP, and you had to learn how to walk on crutches and s slur slur your speech, kind of right? Because um, yeah, uh, your character was um, what had a more extreme c uh, case, I would say, right? Was that a challenge? Right. Um, no, <laughs> I no. just I just was lazy with my my th mental thinking. So okay. with, with my cerebral palsy, um, I have, I have kind of like a three second delay. Okay. So everything I say and everything I do, um, I thought three seconds before I actually do it. Okay. So, um, for me, what I would do is I would just let that go into play with my character and mm. just utilize the crutches. So it really embodied itself. I didn't have yeah. to do a lot of work when it came to cerebral palsy. Um, it was really just more or less like, does these, these moments fit in the story? Can I, does my CP play in the here and, and really just doing it, um, right. and hoping you, you, you spent your teenage years basically filming Breaking Bad. 
Um, do you feel like you missed out on anything in those years of life um, that normal teenagers would do? Oh, yeah, I missed out a lot. Um, but at the same time, I, I didn't miss out on anything. Right. I, like, as, as a young adult, as a kid, as a teenager, like, what they normally go through, I didn't really go to a traditional school. I didn't really have traditional friends. I didn't really live a traditional lifestyle. Um, so for me, it really was more or less like I'm not, I'm not really losing anything, but I'm gaining. It's it's more or less when I'm 13, I'm actually 21. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have the I have the responsibilities of a much older adult, but I'm still. 12 years old <laughs> yeah you, you're forced to grow up way faster than you're supposed to right i think that's the entertainment industry though that makes when you enter this industry in general that's what it does to you and, and the thing is it, you can look at it as a negative or you can look at it as a positive right but you have to you have to grow up <laughs> like yeah. you you can't you can't afford to be naive and and you can afford you can afford to be caring and kind and generous but you can't afford to be naive and gullible and and too hopeful because people kill that <laughs> like yeah. people don't people don't like that and they look at that like um weakness right if you if you're too gullible what made you want to become an actor in the first place uh, I, I know didn't your have sister, anything else better to do. I know your, <laughs> I know your sister was into acting as well, right? Um, uh, yes. And you guys actually moved to LA or for her, and then because for her, yeah, and then you landed. I knew no one. I knew no one. I lived in LA. I didn't go to school in LA. I didn't have friends in LA, and I I didn't have a job and. I, um, you know, LA is expensive and, right. um, my mom was kind of sick at the time. Um, she was in a car accident right after my sister was born. Oh. Um, and, um, my sister was really little and I was like, I, I want to make money and I still want to do things. I want to meet kids my own age. So the only real profession a 12 year old can have is wow. in, in Los Angeles is acting. Wow. Um, so that was kind of my goal was, was like, okay, I want to do this. I'm going to make some money. I'm going to meet some friends. And then next thing you know, it, it turned into a career. Right. And fast forward 15 years later, here, here we are um, still making movies, still pushing forward and, and doing, the, doing the damn thing. You have uh, slided a little bit right and left in, 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 in industries, but still in the entertainment. I've seen you go towards modeling as well that was something yeah. different i loved it i saw you on catwalk I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh, damn bro looking good and on 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 stage doing the whole thing i think uh, are you yeah. first to do that like um from from you know someone with disabilities and going on such a big name you know i i don't know if i'm the i'm i don't want to say i'm the first because I'm not, but right. I'm probably the first with as much notoriety to, to be able to do those things when I did them. Um, that was 2010, 2012, wow. 2000, like you didn't really see disability and modeling and fashion. And, and for me, that was a big step. And, and I worked five years in, in, in four years, really in traveling to, to Milan and Paris and Germany and, and um and all over all over europe um uh, modeling and and you know it was something that you, you didn't see people with disabilities then right like you do now and and i was very lucky for that did you enjoy it was that something like you enjoy it and you oh, said dude. i want to do more of it like <laughs> i had a good time and, and you know you the the models were great like all the all the artists that i was working with were were talented and and smart and and beautiful um so like it's, beautiful it's, right that's nice. that's a big i saw that smile right there i saw it he was like yeah just it, it was nice being around these people right well the, it was wild because i was kind of smaller and like i i'm not like 
I'm a Come mom, on. but like I'm not like a like <laughs> no, oh man. You, Some of those they're they're perfect. It's <laughs> wild. It's like you're not human. No, no, um, no. You looked you looked you looked so much better. Honestly, like I saw you on Vivian Westwood, you did gap campaigns, um, you did huge yeah. stuff and you looked better than a lot of them. Trust me. I was like, damn, and this is just to go this is to show you guys that I mean I want to see more of this. You know what I mean? I want to see more. Everyone does. I want to see you do a hundred times. I get more excited to see you walk uh, walk that catwalk than any of those other models. I'm sorry. And to all the res with all the respect to everyone else, you know, like I, I got super excited. And, and that's something I want to see more of. And and that's and that's what we're working towards when it comes to inclusion and equality, when it comes to mass media is that you're not alone yeah. so many people want to see this type of media people don't want to see the the glossed perfection anymore and 100%. i think people want realism yes people want truth i agree a hundred percent and i hope um that we do see more of that and i think it it's it's been on a brighter side you know it is it's it has been going up positively and with people like you speaking up showing being a perfect example of how to do it it's it's amazing because you inspire and i'm telling you this rj you inspire a lot of other people to be like you or to become and take a big step and to do something different you know come out of their comfort zone Well, that, that's been the goal from the beginning is, is stepping out of a realm of comfort and, and putting yourself in a position where you can, you can change your life positively. And more often than not, people forget how easy it is to make an impact. It right. doesn't take millions of dollars. It doesn't take the, 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 an army to do it. It takes one act of kindness, one act of generosity And that carries more weight than I find than, than most organizations. So true. What are you working on now? What is next for RJ Mitty? What's coming? What are you? What have you been working on? Uh, what can we look forward um, to? I have I have a couple of movies coming out. One called um, Isaac um, with okay. some amazing actresses. You can check out uh, the trailer on my Instagram and Twitter. I have it posted there. Okay, awesome. Um, I have another movie called The Oak Room that will be coming out very soon. Um, very excited about that. It's a it's a narrative story, kind of like a storybook of these interwoven stories all coming together with this same narrative but different different points of view. Okay, that sounds exciting. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, and and then I actually uh, I actually been developing um, a platform for musicians and, and kind of creating a, um, a venue. And I, I, I'm a big believer of this new media platforms and I've been for a long time. And for me, I, I think it's always been the next step of the evolution of television. Okay. Um, so my buddy who um, has this company called signs recordings, okay. we're developed a website called hummingbird. Okay. And uh it's 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 kind of a, a a multimedia facet, kind of an online venue. That's amazing. Um we're developing. That's super exciting. So, I, I that that's some amazing stuff. And uh yeah, those platforms and again your two movies, I think that's it's keeping you pretty busy right now, right? Um for I mean, yeah, and, and not including the foundation, um of course that, that we're in the middle of. So yeah. it's every day, man. You you gotta stay on the grind and, and like you you understand just as well as I do that you gotta stay on top of your work, you gotta stay on top of the art and, and keep changing those horizons so you stay inspired. Hundred percent um give give the audience and the viewers who are watching and cut with us one right now um give them one advice uh in general can be anything yeah um that you want to tell them i i think the biggest um advice that i can give anyone and and the things i want people to take away from from what i say is is initially don't settle for who um who and what you're you want you are but who you want to be and and anything is possible 
can't is a mindset. That's a decision. And it may seem impossible now, but if you choose that route and you want that, you can make the impossible possible. It's all about making a decision and you sticking by that decision. Amazing. Um, we're going to play a little game, all right? Uh, and then we're uh, I'm going to leave you to finish off your business. I had an amazing time. Um, let's play this game. Would, it's a would you rather game. So I'm going to ask you okay. what would you rather, all right? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Would you rather uh, time travel to the past or to the future? Ooh, uh, past. To the past. Okay. Um, would you rather read the book or watch the movie? Book. Book. I like that. You're 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 OG with that one. <laughs> would you rather <laughs> live inside a museum or inside a zoo? Ooh. Ooh, museum or zoo? Uh, a uh, zoo. A zoo. It's more life, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't be alone. Yeah. Um, would you rather be able to control someone's mind or read someone's mind? Read. Read. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you rather be a deep sea diver or an astronaut? Ooh, same thing. <laughs> uh, I I like diving, but uh, I would probably uh, astronaut. Astronaut. Okay, and I I actually had another one, but I need you to explain this because I know your passion for bacon is on the next level. Like, yeah. you love bacon, bro. You you're a breakfast guy. They called you king of breakfast. Yep. <laughs> I mean, hey. <laughs> All about it. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a eggs and bacon, my eggs, bacon and sausage dude. You know. Yeah, that's that. That's um, uh, what's your favorite drink? Let me get your favorite drink. Let me think. Um, my, like, wait, morning drink or drink in general? In general. <laughs> <laughs> let's say, let's say, if you okay, morning, what are you gonna have in the morning? Orange juice or are you a juice type? Uh, you know, I'm a water guy. Water? I'm, a, I'm a, I'm a hardcore water guy. Uh, I like, I, I mean, orange juice, apple juice. Um, you ever mixed um like pineapple and apple together? Oh yeah, I, uh, bro, this Tom. is this is something I, I oh. yeah, this is. This is really good. We t we seen this before. I I was in LA for four years, and a lot of my friends um, actually had that mix, and they made me try it. So that is the bomb. Um, RJ, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much. Pleasure's mine. Uh, you're an inspiration. I say this, and I keep saying it because I want you to keep doing what you're doing. Don't even think about stopping. Go 10 times harder, my brother. You have the support of millions along with me and my followers. And I hope that um, we see you again soon with, you know, upcoming and cool projects where we can be Thank proud you of so you. much, man. Thank it was, a, so it was a pleasure to talk with you. And, uh, and if you need anything, you know where to find me. So For have sure. a good day, dude. Thank you so much, bro. All right, guys, this was RJ Mitty, and we had an amazing session. If you're only listening to the audio, make sure you check out the visuals on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Uncut with Us One. And if you're watching this, thank you so much for coming back. We are back. We have so many episodes coming out. Thank you to our amazing guests, and uh, stay tuned. We out.